Howdy everybody. So as uh, 2023 kind of winds on down here, I like to mentally kind of take an inventory of like, you know, what's happened in the year. I just kind of like to reflect and, you know, within the shop space, you know, I've got my own kind of list of objectives that I either failed at or succeeded at, you know, in the mountains and like personal pursuits. But here in the shop, I think I've started kind of doing the same thing. You know, I think uh, to give maybe kind of like a, you know, cheesy analogy, I would say that like, you know, every year I kind of think of like, you know, I've got, you could say like all my abilities of what I can do in the shop. And, um, you know, if it was to be represented by the circle, you know, I think every year I bring more junk into the shop and a little bit less junk leaves. But, you know, some of the things I buy, you know, like maybe I'll buy a new tool and when I first get it, you know, it will help me with some new ability. And once I become proficient at it, you know, maybe that bubble becomes a little bigger. Um, or sometimes I'll buy something because like maybe I've got, you know, some task here that I do quite a bit, but my methods for doing it at that point had been really annoying. So I feel like all the stuff I bring into the shop is basically about hopefully eventually the circle gets bigger. I get more and more efficient in every portion of the circle. And honestly, maybe what it comes down to is actually enjoying existing within the circle more and more, you know, like existing, like enjoying the things I'm building and you know hopefully that stays there because once you stop having fun then what's all this all these tools for anyways if you're not having fun doing it so i thought today would be a fun time to kind of reflect on a few things that have entered my shop today or proven i mean entered my shop this year are proven really useful uh, that i'd like to just share that usually just don't fit in the context of other videos and you know i was kind of hunting around for some small christmas presents for people so kind of i don't want to uh, I don't want to market this as like a Christmas present video, but I think some of these things are quite cheap and to me have just uh, really helped me enjoy my time here in the shop. So let's get started. Um, the first two things I'm actually going to show though aren't actually within building, but they're very much based on uh, kind of just the ins and outs of every day. So the first tool are these retractable ratchet straps. Um, I now own four of these. And then I have a separate bin with about 20 traditional ratchet straps. And I just, I may never buy different kinds of ratchet straps unless I need some like super heavy duty ones. But basically these uh, have a little button and when you press it, you can extend this. And then if you actually need it to ratchet, you kind of lift it up out of this kind of locked down mode. And then it just works like a regular ratchet strap. So. So it turns out I had a little bit of trouble conveying why these ratchet traps work so well just sitting at the workbench. So I decided to just head outside and kind of demonstrate their two big advantages. Here's four of these ratchet straps and here is kind of the rat's nest of all my regular ratchet straps. So that's the first advantage of these is that anytime you need a ratchet strap, you can just pull one out and not, you know, sit in here trying to untangle them. But the big advantage of kind of having the tension uh, with that red button as I was demonstrating is like a traditional ratchet strap I think we've all experienced some form of this is you know you'll go to hook it somewhere like on the side of your trailer and then you got to get to the other side to secure the load but the second you release any tension on this you lose that hook point right and there are tricks you can do about wrapping it around but honestly you know if this was a flat sheet you couldn't wrap it around so that's a traditional ratchet strap but this ratchet strap since it has that tension it can hold you know you can hook it and as long as you keep that red button pressed even if you accidentally lose tension it kind of keeps itself in place which then as like you're trying to get up and over the trailer you know even if you accidentally lose tension as long as that red button's pressed it will keep your hook in place so if that's something that's ever frustrated you then uh i think that will resonate with you so just such a simple product that you know for so many years i didn't own and now I absolutely love them. So that's the first product on the list. And then the second product, which is also just kind of about logistical stuff in and out, is actually, I bought myself a new shop vac this year. Um, the old shop vac I had was one of those, like I bought like the biggest shop vac I could buy. Uh, but honestly, uh oh, and now I'll find out I can't fold this handle. <laughs> um, the other shop vac I had, I just bought like the biggest one I could. And it was, 99% of the time just in the way, you know, like it was too heavy to lift. So it just lived on the floor, but it was like kind of a round container with this oddly shaped top. Um, I'll maybe just put a picture of the one I had 
And as a result, like you couldn't stack anything on it. This thing I love because when I'm not using it, it just kind of lives like this, but it's really just like the form factor of a toolbox. So when I'm not using it, it just lives on a shelf. Um, it has a, a power cord that lives inside here. And then the hose, like, you know, I wish the hose was a little longer at times, um, but for the tasks I need to do, which is usually like, you know, I'm pretty lucky to have a large kind of central dust collection in my shop. So um, this gets brought out when my little handheld Makita vacuum is just not quite enough, um, but I can't get it with my large dust collection either. So like, you know, I'll use this maybe once a month for like cleaning my car um, or if I like do some kind of home improvement project inside and I just need to like pick up some wood shavings or some drywall, then this thing will come out. Anyways, I don't know why other companies can't seem to make shop vacs in this kind of form factor. So it's kind of odd to recommend a tool based on how much uh, enjoyment it brings you when you're not using it, but that's basically why I really enjoy the shop vac. All right, so continuing. I've got a few tools that this year um, have kind of become useful to me in every day. First off is these flexi uh, screwdrivers. Now these are actually a quarter inch and a 5 16th inch that have been kind of in my plumbing, like hose clamp, you know, or for using hose clamps for a couple years now. And I actually absolutely love these flex shafts. I find like when you're tightening down a hose clamp, you know, it'll start to rotate around a little bit. So if you're in a tight spot, that can just kind of make up for some of that inaccuracy or uh, lack of alignment you may be experiencing. But this year I actually built a big kind of built-in bookshelf for some friends. Um, I'll put a picture up of it here. The lower part of it had some sliding doors and I needed to basically, you know, I had two sliding doors that had, I don't know, about three eighths of an inch between them and I needed to tighten the screw down. So if I had used, you know, kind of like a regular screwdriver, I would have been at this angle because I couldn't get between the doors to have the screwdriver straight up and down. So I found out that they make those flex shafts um, with just a little bit holder for like quarter inch bits. So um, basically this has been like a great staple now. Anytime I have like a fastener that's not aligning, um, what I'll find is, you know, sometimes even like if you have a screw, like if you were gonna be, uh, I don't know, let's see as an example, like if you had a flat surface like this and this went all the way up, you know, maybe you can't get your screwdriver quite flat, but this you can pretty easily just flex it over. So this is, I think, become one of my most like grab now products. I've had this for a few months and I'm assuming it's gonna hold up as well as these flex shafts. It's just that the tip is made slightly different to uh, kind of magnetically and with this little um, spring ring hold these little bits in there. So this is a great little tool. I think this is maybe the, if you had to buy some Christmas presents on this list, I think this is something that most people don't have in their toolbox, but I think it's super handy. Um, after that, I think as a maker, if I could call myself a maker, one thing I sort of hate um, with a medium passion, depending on how many beers I've had, is a Phillips screws. And I think they just strip out a lot. I wish we could just go to like Robertson or Square Drive or even like Torx bits. I think they're just way, way less frustrating to work with. But um, kind of closely to Phillips is you'll often get these screws that have these little lines in them. And those are actually posi drive bits. And for years, I was aware of what posi drive was, but just, you know, would just kind of use uh, Phillips bits. So this year, I originally purchased this uh, Blum brand screwdriver, which uh, Blum hinges all use posit drive. So I finally bought this screwdriver. And after thinking, you know, I just think that I respect uh, being armed with the right tool. So I actually went out ahead and I bought a couple Baco screwdrivers. Baco has become kind of my go-to brand for screwdrivers that I really enjoy. So I've got the uh, Posi Drive 1 and 2 there. And then I also bought this little Weira kit that I, because I thought I might be using these in my impact gun. Um, and that may happen in the future, but it turns out basically all the work I've done this year, which has been mostly hinges and then electrical components, I've found have qu these quite often. Um, I actually, they've all been delicate enough tasks that I've just been using hand screwdrivers. But anyways, I think, you know, I think Phillips and Posi Drive is one of the most frustrating fastener styles out there. But at least this way, like mentally, if I'm stripping out one of these, I'm not 
debating to myself whether life would have been more enjoyable if I had bought Posi Drive. So something that for years I just uh, kind of ignored. Do I think there's a huge difference? No, not a huge difference. I think they do kind of uh, register in the fasteners a little better, but in the grand scheme of things, I think it's just right. It's good to have the right tool for the job, especially like once you start getting frustrated with the job, at least you're not questioning that portion of it. All right, and then just a couple more things. Um, one thing this year, hold on, shoot, I need a drill. <laughs> All right, so one thing uh, this year that I acquired is I went out and I bought myself a really nice countersink set. Uh, this one is made by Champion, and I've actually just, I just purchased these two sizes again, which tend to be maybe the, these three are the ones I use the most. Um, these two just kind of with working on vans, I use almost nonstop. But I think a lot of us are familiar with uh, traditional countersinks. Here, let me get rid of some of this stuff. Traditional countersinks that have these flutes. And I use these for, you know, starting out. And then I did go to like fluteless countersinks. Like this is one I use quite extensively now for the last few years. But this countersink set is probably like the last time I'll buy countersinks. Now I've got a little board here just to demonstrate a few things. I think most of us have uh, like drilled holes with these. And, you know, I'll have to show a, you know, like there, it's okay. Um, this is actually one of, this was better, but you can tell this hole is not perfectly round. Um, and basically that is because as these are spinning, they're slowly kind of re-registering in their spots. Um, you know, I think this one, you can kind of feel that with your hand. I know from previous experiences, that one does way worse with that effect. Even you can see all these little steps here. Um, so that's, you know, fluted countersinks. So then eventually, you know, you may come across uh, fluteless countersinks, which I think just make this beautiful round hole. Um, but, you know, I think the actual quality of that countersink is just flawless, you could say, or as close as you can get to it. But you'll even notice on that one how I've off-centered my hole. Um, so that is where these ones with kind of the pilot tips come in really handy. You know, this set comes with a quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, and half inch. Which, you know, if you're in between sizes, usually I just use the next pilot bit down. But like this 5 16 inch bit on this 5 16 inch hole, it will just keep the hole perfectly centered. So I'll show an up close of that. But you know, these it just helps to have like a perfectly aligned countersink hole. So this set uh, wasn't cheap, um, but I think it's an American made company, Champion. Um, the actual demo picture that it shows has this really nice Champion logo on it. Mine came in this little wood block, but Functionally, it's the same and that's just something that I waited for too long I use these in metal too and they seem to have held up just fine. So Anyways, that is a purchase that if I could go back in time, I would have made quite a bit earlier. So There's that and then the last thing that this year is I feel like I had quite a few more projects like in my own time working with steel this year and um you know, I think we're all familiar with these spring-loaded uh, spring center punches. This is one that I still use for woodworking quite a bit, but I did uh, come to really respect this star at, it's their 18C uh, center punch. You know, these, you know, well, you know, these guys, you know, with the single punch, they do leave a mark, but it almost feels more like a cosmetic kind of indent while this thing has a considerably stiffer spring but the dent it leaves is just substantial enough that I find it alleviate like especially working with steel um, you know it, it's actually enough of a mark that it's made that your uh, drill bit's not going to walk so this is just a super you know again it feels like one of those tools that I'll probably hold on to for the rest of my existence here so this thing wasn't cheap um, you know you can walk into Harbor Fade or Home Depot and get one of these for like less than 10 bucks. This thing is like five times the price of that or more. And, but I just find 
you know, it's like nice to uh, buy once, cry once. So this uh, center punch that's got the heavy duty spring in it, I've really come to appreciate this here. So, you know, overall, all these things are fairly minor tools, but I just think, you know, they help me a lot around the shop, kind of makes things less frustrating. And um, I think that's, that's really important. So anyways, that's kind of a wrap up of 2023 and tools that I have been kind of keeping in the back of my head that I couldn't really put into a video or I felt like they were going to feel a little out of place to kind of highlight them. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching and uh, hopefully see you next year and everyone enjoy your holidays and Merry Christmas.